attorney with us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he was going to be here later, but um, well, we would like to sit up there with the panel if you could. We have a chair for you. You can't. I can't. I have to feed them. Oh, okay. All right. Well, so we're going to just move our agenda around a little bit, and just let me say that. The Oakland City Attorney's Office has been absolutely fantastic in this struggle of really leading the way among Bay Area cities to get the cities on board um, around legal strategies to stop the spray. And we owe him and his office a huge debt of gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. I, first of all, let me apologize to my fellow panelists for not being able to stay with you. There have been a change in plans, and I think pretty much everybody here who uh, has children knows that things sometimes juggle. And um, I thought I was in control of my life until I had children, and then I realized I control nothing. Um, <clears throat> So my boys, uh, Samaritan and Gabriel, are just out of soccer practice, and I need to get them fed. So I apologize, but uh, they are, um, without being cliche, obviously, they are m part of my motivation for why I was delighted to work with the coalition uh, in this tremendous victory for, for the power of democracy at, at the grassroots level. I don't have a lot to say. I want to thank you, Dorothy. I want to thank the coalition. Uh, it's a lot easier to do my job uh, as city attorney when there is such a clear public outcry on an issue um, as there was in this case. I was happy also because the slogan in my office is dare to be cliche and I was delighted to come up with the phrase uh, spray first ask questions later which got picked up by a whole bunch of uh, other folks and uh, we always like doing that. I think in an alternative life, I might have been in advertising. Um, so having said that, thank you so much. For, I, I do agree that we need to remain vigilant uh, on this issue. That, uh, that you know, they've stopped for now. Um, but I, I think we really need to monitor these, this situation together and to stay in touch about what other future plans um, the state of California may have for us and for our communities. Having said that, uh, I can't thank you enough. We, those of you who are here in Oakland and follow the papers know or can surmise how difficult my job can be sometimes trying to be the general counsel of this government. And so when an issue comes up that is morally clear and legally clear, where we have support not only from the public but support from our assembly member, uh, assembly member Swanson, who came on board uh, early, right away, I mean, came on board, it doesn't even, he was there from, from jump with a good piece of legislation and good hearings and a good position. Uh, when that happens, it makes it much easier for me to do my job. So thank you for doing yours as citizens. I'm here and came by anyway because I wanted to be sure to honor you uh, for your work. So thank you very much. Give yourselves a round of applause for having gotten us this far. And, and with that, I guess I'll take a couple of questions. Yes, hi. So it sounds like you're not dusting your hands off and saying this is over. I don't think uh, I don't think we we should. I th it's a good outcome. I think we should be vigilant. So no, I'm not dusting my hands at all. The council gave me a clear resolution to pursue. Council city council was very good on this issue. Clear resolution to pursue. And should they come forward again without full review and full study, we'll be there with you again. Yes. Our, our charge, most all the cities were very clear that our charge here was that we were concerned that they were moving forward with the aerial spraying of millions of people absent an environmental impact report. That's what most of the cities passed. Now, if what the coalition wants at some point is cities to come in on the eradication program, even if it's not an aerial spraying, 
uh, at least in Oakland, I can't speak for the other cities, although I think it's true there too, you would probably need to go back and get a new resolution on that basis. Yes, ma'am. Supposed pesticide ban, <coughs> and I think it is really, really important that you defend it for us, not just from the aerial spray, but also from the the goop that they're going to put on the the utility poles. Three thousand utility poles per square mile. It's going to be everywhere. Please don't stop. We need you to actually go in there and stop the twist ties, stop the trapping, not just the eradication program, but the traps, which are also the same chemical that is coming out of those planes. And the, the SPLAT, it's called SPLAT, Specialized Pheromone Lure Application Technology. SPLAT is very apt. They're going to splat it on the utility poles all over. Would you please consider doing some legal action across regional boundaries to stop this and defend our pesticide ban in Oakland? Let, let, me, let me suggest, yeah, I, I, I appreciate what you're saying. And it would be easy for me to, you know, just kind of say, yeah, right on, let's go. I actually was the author of the Integrated Pest Management Policy when I was a city council member. Um, it governs the city's actions. It doesn't govern private action, and it doesn't govern state action. You will need, if you want, the city attorneys from the different cities who were together in coalition here, <clears throat> to move forward on the basis of this program as it stands now without the aerial spray, you have to go back and get us new authorization from our councils. Yeah, I, I, I can't speak to the other cities. I'm just speaking now to Oakland. I would need new authority. Yes, ma'am. No, right here, you. Oh, you're sorry. Yes. Well, I don't know if you heard, but um, global warming has just been declared a national security threat. So the apple mouth will soon become terrorist, and you will be unpatriotic. Well, I'm glad you said. I'm glad you mentioned that because you know this is this is a really we're holding on to a video for our website. Uh, some of you may know that uh, the city of Oakland sued East Bay Mud regarding the uh, regarding uh, landslides coming off of the reservoir, and when we asked them for documents about the reservoir. They said they couldn't give it to us because of national security. So I went up with a camera and a ladder, uh, looking at you know the six-foot fence and saying, "Well, this is a national security site. I don't see anybody with a machine gun. I don't think. Uh, well, this is a six-foot fence to keep me out, but this is an eight-foot ladder. Uh, but we haven't put it up yet because you know we're still in the middle of litigation. But you know, national security gets is an excuse for every governmental agency, as you know." Yeah. <coughs> yeah, well, in that case, yeah, what can I say? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I've been seeing and hearing a lot about the EIRs and people's confidence in the validity of these EIRs. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Because isn't there a huge amount of political pressure and not just pressure, but action? Within well, those agencies that, that do the Sure. Well, I, for those of you who couldn't hear the question, it's basically how do you count, if I can paraphrase it, how can you count on the validity of what the EIR says when they're created often by consultants who are hired by the same agencies who are making the project? But what, we were, what we're concerned about with EIRs is that the EIR is testable. It's transparent so, such that the public can then say, wait a minute, your consultant is saying A, B, C, D. Our consultant is better qualified than yours and says your consultant, you know, our consultant is bigger than your consultant and our consultant is smarter than your consultant and here's why you're wrong. You can never, if your goal is to get in a pluralistic society a government that is always going to be an agreement and all of us in agreement on what the objective truth is, we're gonna be disappointed. What you need though is transparency and fairness and process. And what I was personally offended by and why I got so you know, agitated is I've watched EIRs and disputes over EIRs be used to stop affordable housing, stop important things. I just couldn't believe that you could mass spray 
a population with something untested without at least going through an EIR. So it, for me, it was very simple. It was really as much a process issue for me and a fairness and transparency issue on a personal level. I hear what you're saying. I would just say demand transparency from your government on everything. I'm going to take one more, and then I, I don't want to dominate this. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I want to know about the testing um, and how that's going to go down the line, because I understand that the so-called independent company in Texas, where the chemicals manufacturer has done three of five tests, and they're all safe. And they're 20 minute tests. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'm going to defer to other people who are smarter than me about the technicals. I, I don't know the answer. All I can tell you is when we did, uh, when we did the integrated test management policy in Oakland in '97, the main point I was making at the time was that we're talking about the city using Roundup, and that the testing lab that had certified Roundup for the EPA had subsequently been found to have uh, jerry-rigged the results on other tests. We never could show that they jerry-rigged the Roundup tests, but we knew they were not a reliable lab. And that actually meant a lot to my fellow council members at the time and was part of why they decided to ban Roundup from use by the city. I'll take the one more, yeah. yeah. My name is Glenn, I'm from Senators. I just want to bring to your attention that back in September, October, uh, said that we only had a few months of a window to be able to eradicate. And now, suddenly they've let the aerials, and it had to be aerial spray. Now they've let the aerial spray go, and they're going to use the uh, sterile moss. But the actual release of the full amount of sterile moss isn't even projected till 2011. So the window is closed. In other words, I just wanted to bring you that to attention. That's what they've talked about. And they had to do the aerial, but they're not doing the aerial. The window's closed. So it's it's... It's irrational, it's inconsistent, and it seems like the eradication is for their purposes, obviously not for the purposes of eradicating the law. Yeah, okay, that's... Right now, from a BIR perspective, there, as I can, I do not see any remaining legal issue, at least from my client for Oakland, based on the resolution of the city council. So if there are other legal issues that you want to bring uh, forward with the cities in place, at least in my city, I need new authority. So the resolution only spoke to the mode of distribution, not no. the toxic it spoke. It spoke to the EIR. It spoke to the lack of an EIR before going forward with an aerial spring. Yeah. I, they didn't address that. I, I would just urge you to look at, I'd urge you to look at the resolution. The resolution is, is my authority to go forward. They are appealing the EIR. They have, that hasn't stopped. I understand that. That's why I said we need to remain vigilant. But it's for aerial. In other words, ground is not a, is not part of the resolution or part of the legal case. So it has it's, it's EIR is the issue with uh, with us. It's EIR. It's EIR for aerial. Only aerial. That's, that's my understanding yeah. of our resolution as I'm standing so, here right so now. So uh, ground resolution includes You would need to go back. You would need to go back. Thank you. Thank you very much.